Right then, guys. One way, or one really good way that I've found over the years to get students really to engage with what you want to be teaching them about sustainable fisheries is by going and building a large model. Right. This large model will allow them to visualize lots of the different points and lots of the different methods of sustainable fishing that you are going to go and put together. While they're going through and looking at it, this will allow them to have lots of Q&A, so lots of questions and answers that you can keep asking them throughout. Some things to think about before you go and, and use this method. It does take a little bit of time to go and build the model beforehand. So make sure that you're well prepped before and make sure that before you go and build the model, you have a clear vision of the information that you want to go and get across to the students. Right, so we'll just go and have a look very, very quickly to short video about how the model can be used. The trick to going and building a model to go and teach about sustainable fisheries, I found over the years, is just go and make sure that there are lots and lots of components and lots of bits in it that will help engage the students because teaching about sustainable fisheries can quite often be a little bit dull. So, I saw stuff, we went and we built the pier, then off of the pier you could go and put different bits and bobs just to go and catch the students' eyes about what they need to be thinking about. So immediately they're already thinking about the harpoons, the fishing rods, the lobster traps, we've got reef nets on there and such forth. When you go through, after that, make sure that for each bit of information, you go and you've got some nice clear information that's down on your model that you can go and help explain to the students what's going on. It also helps remind you what you need to be talking about. So we've got the little trawler here, so we can have the fish lines coming off it. We've got the wide mash traps, we've got floating traps, like I said before we've got the reef nets, we've got harpoons and we've got our fishing poles. As you're going through, make sure that you go and ask lots and lots of questions. I personally, because it amuses me, I casually move my little shark around the model as I'm talking through it because that also helps just engage the students that little bit more, especially if they're going and they're getting a bit bored with, with what you're talking about. So like I said, the main trick is make sure that you keep going. You can move at a relatively fast pace and go and ask students lots and lots of questions about what you're talking about as you are working right, so through it. Right, so now we've gone and we've had a look at the model. Another few things that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, why are you doing it? have it set up in the middle of the room because then you can really go and gather students around it so they're all relatively close to you and you can go and really engage them and it helps manage any sort of behavior problems uh, the only real downside to it is that it does take quite a while to go and get set up initially once all the bits are made however it doesn't actually take that long to set up before the lesson and it doesn't take that long to actually take to bits after the lesson and it can be sashed away in the drawer for the next time that you use it. So if you've got any comments or anything that you want to ask, drop them below and I will endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible. Right, thanks.